Hello ladies and gents, welcome back. I'm gonna give you my thoughts about the quarterfinals uh, that ended today. It was between Dan Medvedev and Felix Roger Alcime and Yannick Sinet Tsitsipas and of course in the semi-final preview. Wow, what can I say? Wow, wow, wow. Did you just see what happened? Felix Uger Aliasime lost against Daniel Medvedev. That was an epic battle between these two guys. I've never seen Felix Uger Aliasime play this great. This was by far the best match in the tournament so far. Both of these players didn't want to surrender. Felix Auger Aliasime started out the match explosive, accurate. Um, uh, he dictated the game. He barely missed. He played high level tennis from the start to almost in the end of the fourth set. Uh, I feel for feel very bad for poor Felix Aliasime. He kept that level for so long, but it wasn't enough. You really need that level the whole two, uh, five sets when you play that's the difference between three sets players and five sets player what doesn't kill you just make you stronger i think that this tough loss will not affect felix in a negative way it will be a boost for him he knows that he's not competing with the bo real boys for real even though he has not won a title Felix unexperienced uh, uh, game plan showed in the end uh, that uh, he has still a lot of work to work on but that level, that performance that he put up in the four sets, four first sets was one of the best I have seen in recent time actually to be honest. Uh, he served tremendously good both uh, out wide and uh, kept his cool, he kept his focus, he made all the right decisions, he played perfect tennis almost. And he kept his focus on Medvedev's forehand. He he just took the right decision. He moved uh, this uh, like a he heavyweight uh, uh, featherweight champion. He was very light on his feet. He moved great around the court. He had that firepower when when he needed that. He used that when he need that needed it most. But I feel so sorry for him because he all in all. I think that if I meet another guy, he, he will have won this match. I think that only Djokovic or, or perhaps Nadal could have resisted this kind of power that Felix uh, put up today. I really feel sorry for him because he served great. He won a lot of points behind his first serves. And he won many points when he was in critical condition. He, when he, Medvedev had those breakpoint opportunities. When he just... Um, you. You, you thought that he's going to lose his serve. He just kept his cool. He, he just did his thing and did what he had done the whole through the whole tournament, playing high octanic tennis. But today I've never seen that first strike tennis uh, from his uh, racket before. He was so clinical. It almost gave him the victory. But Medvedev, who started out slow, started out too defensive, started out too cautious, was a little bit rusty, did a lot of unnecessary unforced er uh, errors and... A double faults. He allowed uh, Felix to dictate the game uh, because he was so far behind the court. He was almost up in the sections there with the uh, audience. But uh, um, somehow I thought after the first uh, two sets that Medvedev is gonna work his way into this match. He's gonna make a competition of this. He's gonna take bit by bit because I thought to myself. Felix will never hold this kind of level for three or four hours. But I was wrong. He did, but somehow he didn't win anyway because Medvedev, he started to return better. The first two sets, he didn't return that great. Mostly due to Felix, phenomenal serving. Out wide, angles, the spots, he, he just did everything right, like I said. And he moved uh, Medvedev uh, around the court. So, Small margins and Felix, of course, he had that match point. He was a uh, match point up in Medvedev's serve in the fourth set. Couldn't prevail he, and gave the immediately uh, Medvedev the chance to come back into the match. I was I, it, It's sometimes like this in tennis. Uh, you can play great for f a couple of hours, but you can still lose the match. They won 182 points each in this match, so... The numbers are telling that this was as even as it was. 
Felix did more winners, but on the other hand, he did a lot of more unforced errors than Medvedev. If you want to beat Medvedev, you should do less unforced errors than him. That's one of the main keys to defeat this Russian wall. Um, Medvedev, what a mental beast. What a clutch player. What a big time player. What a player under pressure. Because he was looking so off in the first two sets. He was far too by in court. He was cautious, like I said. He didn't come up with anything. And his forehand cracked a lot. He did a lot of unforced errors in the first two sets that we are not used to see him in court, especially from the forehand side. Felix pressured him uh, back from the court. Felix, he allowed Felix to dictate the game. And uh, it, it, it was like uh, Medvedev has a problem against offensive players that take times away from him, like uh, Ojer Oliasime did in this match. But in the end, Felix got too tired. He did a lot of unforced errors in the end. He was not clutching the big uh, moments, uh, which is significant for uh, Grand Slam winners. Like I said, that's why he has never won a title. He has to be more clutch. But from this performance, I have nothing to, uh, to complain about. Even though he lost, he did the match of his life. But that was just not enough because Medvedev was much better in the end. He was more resistant. He raised his level. He started to do less unforced errors. He went for more for a flatter forehand. He was uh, approaching the net. He was stressing Felix. He went for the winners. He tried. In the end, if you look at the first two sets, Medvedev, very little uh, winners. But in the end, he landed on 49 winners and 53 unforced errors. And Felix did 64 winners and uh, 75 unforced errors. 75 unforced errors is not what you want to give Medvedev. But in the end, he couldn't resist the Russian wall. It's nothing unnat not unnatural. It was I was just waiting for those numbers to increase after the three first sets. But then Medvedev got his teeth together, his act together. He started to play more uh, solid. He started to do a lot uh, less unforced errors. He stepped into the court and just made. Um, uh, he, that made him the player that we are used to see. So, all in all, I feel bad for Felix. What a mental beast performance by Medvedev. Even he didn't, even if he didn't impress me, uh, like he has done uh, 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 through the tournament, he actually haven't impressed me at all in the tournament. He has just done his job. Uh, we will see if that's enough for the next player that he's going to meet. But first, a little bit stats. Medvedev won 75% by his first serve, 51% behind his second serve. He won um, 22% uh, behind uh, Aliasime's first serves and 43% behind his second serve. Ojel Aliasime was better on the first uh, serve service. He won 78% and 48% behind his second serve. Uh, the difference there was 3% behind the second serve. So it was a small margin there that could have made... Was That was one of the reasons that Medvedev won. He did 64 uh, winners, like I said, and 75 unforced uh, errors. And his uh, returning game, he returned better on the first... On Medvedev's first serve, he won 25% there. And 36 uh, behind Medvedev's sec uh, second serve. So all in all, pretty... Even Steven numbers except the unforced errors number. And we saw that in the fifth set that that was the case that separated these two guys. Medvedev was just more experienced. He kept his level through all the match almost. Uh, even if he lost the two first sets, he, it was pretty close calls there. So, But that firepower from Felix, that decision making, uh, that shot tolerance, that confidence, that uh, risky tennis that he played uh, with his... Uh, serve and three plus points was amazing all credits to felix all credits to medvedev for getting through this epic five set battle that lands for almost five hours i think it was 4 45 or something uh, they were uh, just taking out the best from each other and neither of these guys took the racket out of the other one's hand in the end it was small margin that separated it to these two guys all right, guys, um, enough about that. Let's go on and move on to the next quarterfinal. And that was between Yannick Sinner and Stefano Tsitsipas. Tsitsipas won 6-3, 6-4, 6-2, I think. Three straight sets, very 
uh, confident performance, very sharp uh, performance by the young Greek. He has really matured. Uh, he has matured for this tournament because we all know his issues before the tournament. He hasn't played great. He has changed his racket string. He has some elbow issues. But that serve today, that three plus point, that first strike tennis, the returns, mm, top notch today. He was almost at his highest level today. I will not say B smooth level because Sinner didn't do. Uh, he, he, he Look, Sinner, what kind of player is he? He's a hard-hitting grinder. And when you meet a guy like uh, Tsitsipas, who mix up the games, who takes time away from you, it's all difficult if you don't have a plan B. Sinner is too, uh, plays too simple. His strategic, strategic, strategical game is too simple. Tsitsipas read him like an open book, and the horrible returns from the young Italian was also horrible. It was very short ball. The sh short balls landed in Stefano's striking zones like uh, early Christmas gifts. And what did the young Greek do? He's not stupid. He took a step into the court. He read that. Uh, uh, he read Sina like an open book and took advantage, of course, and punished him and uh, won pretty uh, easily. Because Yannick Sinner, all credits to his uh, hard hitting tennis, uh, like many. Uh, of you guys, many predict, many YouTubers out there had before this match predicted that uh, Sinner will gonna win. I said in my preview, Stefanos will win. I think I said uh, it was 60 40 to Stefanos' favor, or was it 65 35? I don't, anyway, I said that said Stefanos will win this match. I was not um, worried at all, even though Sinner impressed against Demenar. But look, Demenar doesn't do anything, he doesn't have those weapons that Tsitsipas has. Tsitsipas has have his four, serve. He has his forehand, and when his uh, backhand works, he's an awful uh, player to meet. And uh, um, when you keep the ball short, like uh, Sinner did, it was not really no contest here. Even though the stats are very even, one thing stood out, and that was Tsitsipas' breakpoint conversion. He took all of his chances, four out of four, hundred percent. He won 79% behind his first serves and 60% behind his second serves. He got rewarded behind both first and second serve, which shows that um, because in this in that battle, Stefano Tsitsipas didn't have the ace in his pockets. It's not like he was bombing serves in. It was uh, seen as bad returns, uh, that short returns that was not good enough. That was separated these two guys, because if you can, if you want to try to outpunish Sinner from the uh, baseline, you have to move him around. Stefanos didn't have to do that today. He got the, those short balls. He took care of that. He served great. He got those breaks in the uh, uh, first and second set. He got two breaks in the third set, and the match was over. He did thirty winners and twenty-eight unforced errors. Just enough for him to advance to get through all in all a great performance by Sinner through the whole tournament until this match when he met a much more quality player and that's why I, I said that he will reach the second week but not far further I had this matchup in the in my top eight list and I was right I was not right about Nadal reaching the semi-final I thought that he was going to crash out against Zverev in the in the quarters but Nadal like we all know defeated Denis Shapovalov yesterday and now I'm going to start my preview of the semi-finals and the first uh, battle will be between Rafael Nadal against the Italian uh, Matteo Berrettini that we met once and that was at the U Super semi-final in 2019 Nadal defeated him pretty comfortably I think uh, he has been in uh, six semi-finals here at Australian Open and uh, five finals if you count. He has one victory. He has lost four finals here. One against Wawrinka. One against Roger Federer. And twice against uh, Novak Djokovic. Nothing uh, really to do in those uh, final losses. He, he, uh, the, the, those matches, if you count out the 2012 marathon match, uh, the other matches, he, uh, his opponents were much better than him. Even if he could have won against Roger Federer also in, because it was a breakup in the fifth set. But Roger managed to come back. But all in all, uh, he's here to reaching his fifth final and perhaps win his 
sixth final and perhaps win his uh, no sixth final and perhaps win his second trophy here. But Nadal uh, he has looked so consistent like he has done through his career. He has done this for almost 20 years. It's not rocket science that if you want to perform against Nadal, you can't do 75 unforced errors like um, um, Ali Asime did. You can't do 53 unforced errors like Medvedev did against him. You can't give him that. But Felix is an offensive player. He will make you do unforced errors. So the numbers lies a little bit because a potential matchup like... Uh, Nadal versus Medvedev. Uh, Nadal doesn't have that offensive game like uh, Aliasime, so it's harder for more. It's more difficult for Medvedev to do unforced errors. But Nadal, on the other hand, puts more pressure on the ball, so he he can squeeze a lot of unforced errors out of you. But will he do that against Berrettini? I think that he will because if you want to win against Nadal, it's the same recipe always: bomb serves. Heavy, deep, grand strokes. Give him his own medicine back. Take time away from Rafa Nadal. Be consistent. Take your chances. Don't be a Santa Claus. Don't take vacations. Don't take coffee breaks. Don't even think about nothing else but tennis. Don't do anything that can lose your focus. That can make you lower your guard against Rafa Nadal. Look at Chapovalov. He played great. Nadal didn't do his best match. He still won. Why? Because he's the most more consistent player. He's the more experienced player. He he was not nervous like Chapovalov was in the fifth set where he tried to hit and run like he has always done. But Berrettini has that huge forehand. He has that huge serve. He has that first strike tennis. He has that uh, three plus point in his serve where he's so effective he wants to and he should and he knows that he wants and must keep the rallies short against Nadal short as possible but if he tries it too much he will hesitate he will make unforced errors unnecessary unforced errors also most uh, there is a, a, a lot of keys in tennis. This is not rock and science. It, it, even if you uh, look at the stats uh, all over the tournament, you will see that if a guy like Berrettini with his uh, strength and with his weakness, what, what must he do to win against Nadal? He must hold his serve. He must protect his serve to any costs. He must return great. He must be better on his defensive, especially from the backhand side. But Nadal, we know he's going to exploit, ex expose that weak side. He's going to squeeze him into that corner. He's going to just do what he has done with all his opponents through, through, through his career. He's going to take advantage of their weaknesses. So, um, uh, Berrettini must move great in this match. If you want to go around and hit that forehand, he must be in top shape. Because this is Nadal he's going to meet. He's not going to meet uh, lower quality player like he has done through this tournament. This is not PCB. This is not uh, the, uh, the, the other guys that has beaten. Nadal will make him suffer. Nadal will punish him. So if Bertin wants to win, he must take his teeth into Nadal's serve. We all know that Nadal's experience, his serve, his returns are great. They are rock solid. But we saw against uh, Shapovalov, Nadal can also disappear uh, for a small break. But that was mainly due to Shapovalov that he raised his level. So if Berrettini wants to win, he must hold his serve, be effective and not lose focus like he did against Mofils. He was two sets up. Monfils played better and better and Berrettini did a lot of unforced errors, especially from that backhand. That backhand must be the weakest in the top 10. And Nadal, and that's why I think that Nadal will win. He will advance from that um, battle, from that semi-final battle. I think that Berrettini can take one set. Maybe they can go to a, a, a fifth, five set battle also. I don't know. Or maybe Nadal wins in three straights. Because I, I, I think that this matchup is not uh, in favor for Berrettini. I think that Nadal have the edge here. And I think that he will win. And that's my prediction of that battle. 
and on to the next. Stefano Tsitsipas versus uh, Dani Medvedev. They met each other eight times. Medvedev is up 6-2. They have met three times at Grand Slam. Um, last year, Medvedev beat Stefano pretty comfortably in three straight sets. He has also beaten him at US Open. And um, in the last year's French Open campaign, where when uh, Tsitsipas reached the final, he beat Dan Medvedev there, so they are two up in Grand Slams. Uh, yeah, these two guys, they have met eight times, like I said. They haven't met in a final yet. They have not this... They have this big, big rivalry like uh, Mari Djokovic, Mari uh, Novak, or the big four against each other. But this is an upcoming big rival. They haven't met in the final, but uh, maybe they will do that in the future. The, the young Greek, after seeing he, uh, Daniel and Felix battles for five, almost five hours, is of course in his favor. He won his match in just under two hours against Sinner. So he will have more time to rest. He will have been spending less time on court. He will have uh, more energy, maybe, if um, Medvedev doesn't uh, reload quickly. But they have one day rest, I think, and Medvedev will do everything in his power to get that necessary break uh, and focus on the next match. Sometimes I think it's you, a, a tough battle is necessary for your confidence because if this match goes to a lot of tie breaks, we know that um, Medvedev is not, is not the best tie break player uh, we have seen. He won a tie break today he lost tie break uh, today but if you look at his stats his tie break numbers are pretty low for a top ranked player so Medved is here to lift the trophy of course he wants to be in the next number one but against Sitspas what does he have to do he has to be rock solid like a wall like he, he was today in the set uh, three four or five his defense is the key here if he can make and squeeze Anforceros out of a six pass uh, uh, racket he will be fortunate i believe he will uh, prevail if he can return great on uh, stefano's serve it will be great but stefano's he needs to serve great uh, St uh, if stefano's win he must do uh, he has more pressure on him because he has more weaknesses than medvedev medvedev doesn't really have any any weaknesses in my opinion except if i can point out one it, that and that is forehand, but he started to hit that forehand more flatter in the end of the battle between Felix in the fourth and fifth set. We saw that he tried to go for more flat uh, hitting uh, forehand than a topspin forehand. If he can mix up the game like he has done uh, so great, fully tactical, I mean, not uh, serve and volley and stuff like that, he can take out the Greek like he has done six times before. But the Greek for him to win, everything must be top notch. He serve, he returns. His uh, first strike tennis, his breakpoint conver conversions like he uh, today against Sinner, everything must be like the hand in the glove. We know that the Greek has tremendously high offensive tennis skills, extremely high tennis uh, level. But to hit through Medvedev, he really needs those weapons in the next match in the semi final. He needs those weapons to uh, push uh, Medvedev back. To make it uncomfortable, take time from Medvedev. If he can do that, take time from Medvedev, like Felix did today, he can for sure win this match. But on hard courts, I think that uh, Medvedev are the greater player because he has a better first serve, he has a better second serve, he has a better backhand, he has a better shot tolerance, he has a better stamina, he's more resistant, he's uh, more strategic, strategical than the young Greek. And that's why he's better on hard courts. Uh, so, but like I said, the Greek can also um, defeat him. It will not be a huge upset in my opinion. I believe that I have to give Medvedev the slightest edge anyway, even though we, this last battle cost him almost five hours on court. But I think that uh, the Greek will come into the match with great confidence. You know that he had a much easier um, quarterfinal than him. You know that he can beat him. These are the guys that are going to uh, com compete for Grand Slams in the future. One way or somehow, he has to defeat him in hard, on, on hard courts at the Grand Slam events. So why cannot this be the first time? I don't know. We will see. But I give my slightest edge to Daniel Medvedev by 55% again, uh, to 45% in the young Greeks' favor. All in all, 
today's matches. We saw the best matches so far in the tournament. Medvedev defeated Aliasime in a five set battle. Tsitsipas got a much easier um, uh, battle. He won in three straight sets and against Yannick Sinner, who really didn't come up to his standard due to Tsitsipas' great first uh, strike tennis and uh, to his short returns and the short rallies, the, uh, the, the short balls they left in the rallies for the young Greek to execute them. All right, I maybe talk too much now. Uh, so my picks are uh, Nadal in the, fin uh, in the final against Daniel Medvedev. Thank you for watching this video. Take care and bye-bye.